What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immoder Nation. Move over RGB, there's a new sheriff in town and his name is OLED. LCD displays are out and OLEDs are in. Sorry, Snowblind. And OLED displays are everywhere. I've seen them in motherboards, I've seen them in CPU coolers, on keyboards, on headsets, even audio DACs? Why? But what interests me the most is seeing these OLED displays on graphics cards. Now these OLED displays are reserved for the highest of graphics cards, the RTX 2080 Ti Special Editions. I'm talking about the MSI Lightning Z, the EVGA Kingpin, and the Galax Hall of Fame cards. But if you want to get your hands on these cards, you're going to have to pony up some serious cash. The Galax Hall of Fame edition isn't even available in the United States. Brian of BPS Customs had to get his hand delivered from Australia. Psh, show off. So I was just going to admire these cards from afar, but then this man had to go and say this. That is cool though. I want that. That man makes me weak in the knees with his two cents and his digressing. What if I just mounted an OLED display to a graphics card? Hmm. What if I mounted an OLED display to any graphics card I want? <laughs> it's not the Rona. Now before we begin, there are some rules. I'm going to show you how I did it in this video, but by no means should anybody follow this as a guide. And what I mean by that is that I found a much easier way of doing this project. More on that later. So this video starts out with an OLED display and an Arduino microcontroller. If you're unfamiliar with Arduino, I highly suggest that you watch my Spark Fun Adventures kit by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner. Now these graphics cards are definitely using OLED displays, probably a 256 by 64 pixel display, kind of like this one right here. Now this OLED display was a little bit too big for my GTX 1060, so I decided to go with something a little bit smaller. I went with a 0.91 inch 128 by 32 OLED display with dimensions that were half the size of the original OLED, but the display was small enough to fit underneath my EVGA GTX 1060 graphics card. Although if you have vision troubles, I highly suggest you get a display that's maybe a little bit bigger, maybe a 128 by 64 instead. Next, I thought about what sort of information I could display on my OLED screen. Now, I don't know where to get VRAM frequency, GPU frequency, or voltage from the back of a graphics card, but I did think about two things that I could easily get, GPU temperature and fan speed. For this project, I use the Arduino Nano. It's small but powerful enough for what I need. The pinout is as follows. VCC was connected to 3.3 volts, ground connected to ground, SDA was connected to analog pin four, and SCK was connected to analog pin five. First, we need to connect and test our OLED display. I'm using an Arduino Nano to control the OLED. VCC or power is wired to the 3.3 volt pin. Ground is wired to ground. We'll be performing analog reading, so the pins SCK and SDA will be wired to A5 and A4 respectively. SCK is the serial clock and SDA is the serial data. These pins are used to communicate with the OLED display. On our PC, install the Arduino IDE from the Arduino website. We'll need a few libraries to make our display work. First is the Adafruit GFX library. This is the graphics library we'll need for the OLED screen. We'll also need the Adafruit SSD1306 library. Now you could use the UAG2 library, which is arguably faster and maybe a little bit smaller, but your code will look different. Once these libraries are installed, connect the Arduino Nano with the USB to PC. Make sure Arduino Nano is selected from the drop-down menu and the COM port is selected as well. We're using a CH340 USB connectivity for this Nano board, so the old bootloader may work better according to some research that I did online. Open up the examples menu and under the SSD 1306, load the 128 by 32 I2C program and upload the program to test the graphical prowess of your display. Next, we'll create our temperature sensor. There are many ways to do this with a thermocouple or a DHT11 sensor, 
but we'll be using a thermistor. It's small enough to fit close enough to the GPU die. A thermistor is a resistor that varies its resistance with temperature. These are MF52 100K ohm thermistors I ordered from China. They're made of a semiconducting material that's designed to be temperature sensitive. These thermistors are rated at 100K resistance at room temperature, but because they're NTC or negative temperature coefficient, the resistance decreases with increasing temperature. This room is slightly colder than room temperature, so you can see the resistance increasing beyond 100K ohms. We'll be wiring the resistor in a traditional resistive voltage divider. Microcontrollers can't detect temperature or resistance, only voltage. We need to know what the resistance of the thermistor is in order to find the temperature. The voltage in is 3.3 volts. We can get this voltage from the 3.3 volt Arduino pin. We're using this voltage pin on the Arduino instead of the 5 volt because it tends to be less noisy, producing more accurate readings. But you can use either pin. The voltage in runs through a fixed resistor of known value R1 and through our thermistor of unknown value R2 before going to ground. We measure the voltage V out between the resistor and thermistor using the Arduino. We'll use this voltage divider equation to solve for R2 or the resistance of the thermistor. There's a reason why we're using a resistor of known value. If we're at room temperature, then the value R2 of the thermistor should be around 100K ohms. The value for R1 of the fixed resistor is also 100K ohms. So at room temperature, the voltage the Arduino reads should be half of the incoming voltage. And if the incoming voltage is 3.3 volts, then the voltage that the Arduino is reading is 1.65 volts. If the temperature of the thermistor increases, such as when our graphics card gets hot, the resistance of the thermistor decreases. As R2 decreases, the voltage that the Arduino reads will become smaller. Now we have the resistance of the thermistor, but that doesn't tell us what the temperature is. We plug in resistance to the steinhardt hart equation, an equation that determines temperature of semiconducting materials based on resistance, using the coefficients from the thermistor's data sheet. We're left with the value T, or temperature, of the thermistor. I made these voltage divider thermistor sensors. The sensor will be attached to a small part of the GPU chip to measure GPU temperature. The wires will be attached to our Arduino Nano, the resistor side at the 3.3 volt pin, the thermistor side at the ground pin, and the wire between the thermistor and resistor attached at analog pin zero to read voltage. Next we'll create our fan RPM sensor. Most three or four pin computer fans come with an internal hall sensor. This is a magnet that passes the detector inside the fan. Every time the magnet comes in contact with the detector, it delivers a pulse to a wire that is read by the PC. This is also used by the BIOS and other programs to determine fan speed in RPMs. We'll be using this wire to read the fan speed. We'll solder a wire to connect the fan tachometer wire to a pull-up resistor on the 5 volt pin. This will pull the signal high to 5 volts instead of just letting it float. The value of this resistor doesn't matter much, but I chose 470 ohms because it's a low enough value that will return fast results and I just so happen to have an extra one lying around. This can also be done internally in the code since at mega chips have internal pull-up resistors. The other end of the resistor is connected to digital pin D2. This pin will read the hall sensor pulses from the tachometer wire on the fan. Don't forget to ground the fan to the Arduino. I would later discover that PWM fans in the graphics card don't float because they already have a voltage, unlike this DC fan that I have to test, and using a pull-up resistor to 5 volts causes the graphics card fans to spin up randomly. This is likely due to abnormal voltage readings of the hall sensor on the card, which already has a pull-up resistor. Removing the pull-up resistor to 5 volts fixed the issue.
I'm tapping power from the 8-pin PCIe connector. I talked about this in more detail in my finding power for your electronic projects video. The only other option would be to run wires out the side of the car to other power sources. But for a clean, compact look, I chose the more dangerous method. I soldered the red wire to positive and the green wire to ground. I'm using a multimeter to check continuity of my wires. This is to ensure that I don't short any of the connections on the 8-pin before I plug the graphics card in. Not checking beforehand could increase my risk of permanently damaging my graphics card. The thermistor was a bit too wide and was lifting the heatsink off of the GPU when I installed it. Installing the graphics card now would cause it to overheat and fail. I decided to file down the edges of the thermistor which exposed the metal inside of the thermistor. I found out that this portion of the thermistor is electrically conductive using a multimeter. So instead, I use conformal coating to insulate the thermistor. You can also use super glue, it should have little effect on the temperature readings. I'm using a screwdriver to bend the electrodes on the thermistor flat against the green PCB so that they don't make contact with the heatsink, otherwise they could connect and affect my temperature readings. I'm mounting the Arduino toward the back of the card where there's more space. I'll be affixing the Nano with double-sided tape. Here I'm checking to make sure the board fits properly. Apply a thermal paste liberally as suggested by an American Technology News website. Now I'll be including the code for this project in the video description below. Don't ask me for any help or support with it. I don't really know what it means. Ask Michael Reeves. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to ignore your questions and ask, what the f is in a modern nation? The rest of this video was just making a holder for the display. Cut out some plastic, electrical tape to black out the rest of the display. Hot glue that some bitch. Run the wires. I tested out the card and another PC before putting it into the main system, but let's fast forward to that beautiful B-roll. So why would I create this whole video guide if I told you not to follow it? Because I discovered a better way of doing this project. Unfortunately, I was more than halfway through the project before I discovered it. NatStats is a PC performance display tool. It's based upon Cyrax's serial sender application. I have no idea who that is, but you can read all about it on Hackaday. It uses the open hardware monitor library, which quote, sniffs out your CPU, GPU, and motherboard signals while pooling your Windows hardware stats. It then takes those stats and displays them on your OLED screen via the USB. Let me know in the comments section if that's a project you'd like to see. I might consider trying it. Special thanks to Casper Zach and TheoryCircuit.com for the code. Also special thanks to a certain someone who helped me with the fan RPM code. Turns out this OLED display doesn't like interrupts and was having a hard time counting the fan RPMs. I'm not gonna mention his name because he didn't want to quote, be associated with my pathetic pet project. His words, not mine. Thank you so much for checking out this video and if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video.
And while you're at it, why not join the Modern Nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below, or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya.